Are you tired of facing stupid enemies that only move on the platform they were assigned to? Probably not. Ever wondered why the only enemies that follow you freely are always flying? Probably not either, because you've just accepted that platformer games are like that. But have you noticed that in Moons of Darcelon, all walking NPCs can navigate the map platforming around? And have you mentioned how exceptional, remarkable, impressive, truly mind-blowing, absolutely magnificent, and utterly spectacular this is for an indie game in your Steam review? Probably not, since I usually read the reviews and don't recall any like that. However, I do see negative reviews because of generative AI. Now, this is a helpful review, no doubt about it. It's funny how the superficial stands out more than what truly matters. Humans, what a wonderful species, always driven by balance, big picture thinking, and proportionality. But we're not here to rant about human nature. Well, maybe a bit, but mainly, we're here to figure out how the Darsenauts move. Those irreverent little bastards that, despite their advanced capabilities compared to other NPCs, I'm sure you've insulted more than once. Welcome to Chapter 11 of How Moons of Darcelon Was Made. In the last episode, we saw how NPCs have a vision system that organizes visible objects into categories and communicates the highest priority object to a second script, Target AA, to define a behavior, either moving closer or farther away. Once that's set, the Walker AA script is responsible for navigating an irregular polygonal terrain, finding platforms to jump to, and getting as close as possible to the target, constantly improvising along the way instead of pre-planning a full route. So what's the plan? What? No pathfinding? I'm afraid not, or at least not in the way it's usually understood. Pathfinding normally follows an iterative process to find a route from point A to point B, and only then does movement begin. The Darsenauts don't do that. They start moving without the faintest idea of how to get there. Even though they have a vision system that shows them points of interest, when it comes to walking, they are practically blind. They can only read the terrain directly in front of them through a raycast. This raycast provides information about the terrain's position, slope, and whether it's solid ground or a moving object. When the raycast detects no ground ahead, a much more complex sensor system kicks in, capable of searching for ground to fall onto or a platform to jump to. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have the commander, our protagonist, and a lost Darsenaut, who will try to reach its commander using its heuristic rule-based AI and terrain sensors. First, Vision provides information on the position of the commander. Since there are no obstacles between the character and the commander, the commander is considered visible, and we can know his coordinates. In the case of obstacles, the Darsenaut wouldn't be able to know where its commander is. Fortunately for this clumsy little guy, that's not the case. To approach him, the character tries to match its X and Y coordinates to those of the commander, independently but simultaneously. To align the X coordinate, the character walks to the left. However, our blind cane, the raycast, warns that the terrain ends here, so the mechanism to find a place to jump kicks in. This mechanism fires a series of vertical raycasts from predefined positions, both up and down. With the information from all detected ground points, the AI decides on the ideal landing spot, which is typically a point in between two detected ground spots. Why? Because it's safer. If the AI tried to land on a point found at the very edge of a platform, the landing could be slightly inaccurate, and the character might fall off. Once landed, the character continues trying to match the X coordinate and the Y as well, which I'll get to in a moment. So, it keeps walking left until it reaches the commander's X coordinate. Now, you'd think the Darsenaut would get stuck in a loop, rapidly switching between left and right, but no, this doesn't happen. Why? Because there's a hot movement margin that gives the character a range of freedom, allowing it to find paths, as we'll see in a moment. But this is also the reason why Darsonauts sometimes display behavior that the player may perceive as chaotic or incorrect. I would have liked to find a solution for this, but it's complicated because fixing it would mean removing the main mechanism that allows them to find routes. For some reason, players tend to lose trust in the Darsonauts, and as soon as they see a Darsonaut not directly approaching their coordinates, they assume it's bugged or something similar. But the character is actually trying to find a path in the other direction. Sometimes this doesn't make sense, but in other cases, it's the only way to reach the target. In any case, the character will turn around once it surpasses the margin and try the other direction. This freedom margin is proportional to the distance between the coordinates of the target and the character. So the further apart they are vertically, the larger the margin to keep walking once the X coordinate is reached. Thanks to this margin, the character keeps walking, 
without having any clue where it's actually going. But since it's also trying to match the Y coordinate, the character has been scanning for elevated platforms to jump to from the start. I haven't mentioned it before to keep things simple, as those scans wouldn't have had any effect until now. However, now they do. As the character continues moving forward, the jump sensors are active, and when they find an elevated platform that reduces the vertical distance to the commander, the character will jump. Once on this platform, as the vertical distance Y is reduced, the freedom margin for the X coordinate also shrinks, and we could overshoot it, causing the character to turn around and ruin everything. But there's a ladder. The vision script has detected all the ladders and periodically checks if any of them will be useful to us. How does it do this? By accessing the ladders script, which contains information about the platforms it connects to. The first thing it does is compare our ground collider with all the platform colliders connected to those ladders. As soon as it finds a match, we know that we'll be able to use that ladder if we keep walking. However, we also need to check if that ladder will bring us closer to our target. This is easy because, as we already know, each ladder stores the colliders of the platforms above and below it. If we confirm that the ladder indeed leads to a spot closer to our target, it is inserted as an intermediate point, temporarily bumping the commander down in the target list. Since we now have a new primary target and we're at the same height as it, the freedom margin is reduced to the minimum. This puts us outside of that margin, forcing us to walk toward the ladder. Once we enter the ladder's collider, it will be detected by the Walker AI script, and the character will start climbing. And once it starts climbing, the ladder is removed from the list of targets, and the commander becomes the top priority again. Once the character finishes climbing, the vertical distance is reduced so much that the freedom margin for the x-coordinate is small, meaning the character overshoots again. This causes the character to walk to the right. How does, since the Y coordinate still needs to be matched, the mechanism for finding a place to jump comes into play again on this platform, and a jump is performed, leading to the final platform. If you're wondering how this set of rules and sensors even works at all, well, you should know that I sometimes ask myself the same question. But the truth is, it works pretty well. There are some additional details, like an independent freedom period, separate from the freedom margin, which the characters activate when they get stuck. Let's see this in another example. The Darsenout is following the commander, and the difference in height between the two determines the size of the freedom margin. In this case, the Darsenout is outside of the margin, which forces the Walker AA script to move the character to the right to re-enter the margin. However, it soon encounters a wall, triggering the look for place to jump mechanism. This mechanism launches its predetermined raycasts to find suitable ground to jump to, but only finds one point of ground, the first one. The rest are not valid because the raycast detects ground at the start, meaning we're inside solid rock. Not even the first point is valid because the slope is too steep, and even if it wasn't, it wouldn't be enough because we'd only have one valid jump point. Remember, we jump to the midpoint between two ground points because it's much safer. In conclusion, we cannot jump over this wall. At this point, the Darsenaut realizes it's stuck and activates its free movement mode, allowing it to ignore the x-axis freedom margin and move freely in both directions. Since it can't move right, it tries to go left. As the character is also trying to match its y-coordinate with the commander, the look for place to jump on the go routine is running while walking. This time, two valid ground points are found, both with minimal slope. A midpoint is calculated, and since jumping there would reduce the Y distance from the commander, the Darsenaut decides it's a good jump point and performs the jump. After landing, free movement mode deactivates, and the Darsenaut now cares about the freedom margin, realizing that it is outside of it. But in reality, the margin is no longer this one. It's actually this one, because it auto-adjusts based on the difference in height. The Darsenaut moves right again to re-enter the margin and encounters a hole. It could drop down, but that would increase the Y distance from the commander, which doesn't make sense. So it decides not to drop and instead looks for another place to jump, hoping to reduce both the X and Y distances. Now at a higher elevation, it finds three valid jump points and chooses the furthest one because it brings the Darsenaut closest to the target. The jump is executed successfully. This temporary free movement mode often helps them find a path to their target, but not always. Sometimes it's impossible for them to continue and they would need a proper pathfinding system. Something similar to a star, which systematically tries different routes until it finds the right path. Something similar could be implemented in Moons of Darsalon, but I'm concerned about performance. 
Raycasts are expensive, and finding places to jump requires a lot of them. Here, I've explained the process in a simplified way, using just one set of five raycasts to find a jumping spot. In reality, there are four sets, one for finding elevated places with eight raycasts, another for finding lower ones with six, and two more with six each specifically for level platforms. These platforms can be walked on, but can also be passed through, as they don't collide with the character's body. These platforms require a different handling approach. Not all raycast sets are used every time, but most of the time at least two sets are active. Multiply this by 20 Darsenouts on screen, and you'll have a real performance issue. That's why I had to create a priority system to allow only one Darsenaut to launch raycasts per frame. So, with the implementation of a pathfinding system that would require even more raycasts, this problem would only get worse. Moreover, let's not forget that the hero of the game is the player, not the clumsy Darsenauts who need to be guided. That's why the protagonist has commands to direct them. The limitations of the NPC's intelligence give meaning to the mechanics of voice commands. Though this is frequently misunderstood by players, who continue to insult the Darsenauts when they get stuck. These days, everyone is concerned about harassment in gaming environments. But what about the poor NPCs? Nobody cares about them. It's sad. Anyway, this is the end of this chapter. In the next one, we'll dive deeper into how the jump sensors work, including a debug mode that visualizes the results of each raycast. We'll also explore more of the Darsenaut logic to understand why some behaviors might have led you to think they're idiots. But if you think about it, maybe the idiot wasn't exactly the Darsenaut. Nope, I didn't say you were the idiot. That's something you thought on your own. No, 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 don't look at me. I didn't do it. Nobody saw me do it. And you can't prove anything.